As you've probably heard, World War 3 received a huge update the other day, named the .6 Giga Patch. This patch was hyped above all other patches thus far. The community itself was anxious for the patch, which was actually delayed about 15 days from the original expected release. Farm51 decided it wasn't quite ready and needed further optimization before letting the patch go live. The devs were really looking at this patch and hoping that it would be something that would reignite the player base. That being said, the game is currently 40% off on the Steam store, so if you're eyeballing it, keep that in mind as you watch this video. Alright, so what's in it? Will it be enough to solve the player base issue, and is it time to give the game another shot? Let's go through the new additions to the game and see what it brings. Before we get into it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below for all the latest info, tips, and tricks for World War 3. Alright, first things first, the biggest and most important part of this story. I won't say it yet, but I'll just let you see the difference. Bravo 2 is under attack. Soldier down! You see that? If you remember, the game had this weird stutter during firefights that would make it really difficult to appropriately aim at your targets. This was one of the most annoying things about the previous build that honestly made it hard for me to play on a consistent basis. That's been fixed, and it's incredible. Along with that, there are some quality of life additions as well, including this new communication rose, which is also a part of the new spotting system. Enemy UA this system lets you ping where the baddies are and give other locational callouts. It's great for non-micers. They did actually add VoIP to the game as well, which can be really helpful, but it's still in its early stages, so I wouldn't expect anything too great. Now, there are a ton of other things in the notes, including TDK changes, ammo capacity changes, graphical setting changes, just a ton of things. Patch notes will be the pinned comment down below. Now, I can't go over all these because the list is just too long and you don't want me to just read to you. You're here to see the new stuff. We'll start with the new maps. Two new maps have been added to the game. The first is Smolensk. This was actually in the game prior, it just didn't have finished textures, so the playability, if you remember, was, well, subpar. This map is a woodland environment with lots of greenery, many above ground buildings, and also a bunker area. It's not the biggest one we've seen so far, but it sure is the greenest. The other map is Polyarni, a wintry atmosphere with unlevel ground and a tough terrain to navigate. Windows, windows, and more windows. As these maps are brand new, they're not going to be as optimized as the rest of the game, but still new additions that add to the diversity of how to play the game. Next is two new guns. Here's the M4 looking USA-licious as always. Fire rate and damage, as most stats in the game, are subject to change. But the one stat that won't change is that if you're American, you get a plus 10 boost of patriotism every time that lead leaves the end of your barrel. Now if you're from over the pond, don't worry EU friends, you're in for some loving too. The SA-80 is a favorite for you fellas who bleed your country's colors. With the bullpup design, not only will you pretend to have better mobility in close quarters, but you'll also have a 60 round drum mag you can attach to the stock that in real life would be awful for your recoil. America. Now onto vehicles. New toys for all you people that can't shoot with a regular gun. Keep in mind though that if you rely on these to get your kills, then don't expect to enjoy Team Deathmatch very much. Okay, I'll put the coolest first, the heli drone. A deadly eye in the sky dropping bombs and shooting rockets at unsuspected Nubians. A not so noob move though? Equip a jammer as a strike and use it on this sucker as either a repellent to establish a safe zone or to weaken it and shoot it out of the sky. Easy as that. Not part of the update, but I wanted to help you help me because I hate them too. You can find that right here for a much cheaper price. This is actually really helpful for all those annoying vehicles that can wipe you out. Next up, we've got the Ajax, a lean, mean, medium tanking machine. Pop some thermal fission on this boy to destroy those warm-blooded flesh bags. If you're wanting to use this guy, it's going to cost you 3,500 battle points, so you better start taking those objectives.
Next is the BTR-90. The nice thing about this battle buddy is that it spawns on the map for you. Since it's on the map at the beginning, you've got to race yourself over to its position, hop on in, and start popping them baddies right in the face with an unsuspecting turret shot. I recommend grabbing the quad at the beginning and getting there quicker. Finally, you've got the MRAP, the local mobile spawn unit. This vehicle spawns at your base location. Hop on in with your friends and travel the map to provide a tactical advantage to your whole team and flank the enemy team. If it gets destroyed, don't you worry, just wait a little bit and boom, it's back at the base ready to be utilized. Now like I said before, there's a lot more content to this update other than what this video shows, but this is enough to at least get the saliva flowing. Now while all these things are really great things, keep in mind that the game is still highly, highly unpolished. The older maps are more optimized than the new ones, so don't expect super smooth gameplay on Polyarni and Smolensk at this time, but things are getting better bit by bit. Remember, this is an early access title, so bugs should be expected. If you happen to find one of these during your adventures on the battlefield, head on over to the forums and report them so the team can take care of them. On the new maps especially, there are frame drops, graphical difficulties, overall quality limitations. However, this game as a whole is definitely progressing and consistently very consistently being tweaked and tuned. So keep that in mind as you play. All right, so the big question, will this solve the player base issue? Solve the issue and you solve the game's biggest problem right now. Those of us who have been here for months now testing and providing feedback are really hoping so. So far, the reviews are looking good. I hope this trend continues to pick up. Upon the launch day of this new patch, the player base, which usually peaked around uh, 100 or 120, rose to over 350. The next day, nearly 500 concurrent players. Yesterday, nearly 700 players. As I'm finishing this video, it's about 5.30 in the morning, Eastern Standard Time in the US, and there's a game going on as I speak. I'm hoping this is a good sign for the game. As far as the player base, I'm going to be playing NA servers more and more, and I really hope my fellow Americans will migrate that way as well. So far, things look promising. Now, after all this info, is it time to give the game another shot? Like I said before, this game this weekend is 40% off. That's right, just $16 if you see this before Monday is over. The link is down below. Right now, I would say it's the best time to join the game. Even if it's just to pop in and see how the game runs and feels since launch. I'd recommend hopping on the next few weekends just to give it a shot. Especially those of you that have bought the game and were turned off at launch after the first round of patches. You already have the game and you might as well take an hour out of your day to see what all the fuss is about. I'm guessing you might stick around for a couple more. The game is at a really good place right now, the best that it's ever been, and it's headed in a good direction still. Consistent communication and continued updates. The devs truly do listen to feedback. A quick example, the heli drone was never planned on being in the game. The devs listened to us. Now it's here. Product, feedback, changes. 10 out of 10 communication from the dev team. It's easy to say they've taken the money and ran and haven't cared about this game at all, but if that's your stance, you're either a liar or you're too lazy to actually know what you're talking about when you say things, so your friends probably don't trust you either. Alright guys, more to come in the future. Again, for all your World War 3 needs and inquiries, feel free to hit that subscribe button and I'll take care of you. Don't you worry. I appreciate you guys stopping by and taking the time to watch this video. Now looking forward to where this game goes and how it evolves, is it the battlefield killer? Eh, you know, we'll see, but it's definitely something that you should pick up and maybe give it a shot. As for me, I'll see you all on the battlefield.